Hello. So this video is called, Did Jesus Come to America Before the Europeans? Part two. The Hebrew word for tree has two letters and they read from right to left. The first letter means to see, to know, to perceive, or to understand. The second letter means trail to the destination. The tree of life in the book of Genesis in the Bible, in the Garden of Eden, could have been chosen and would have saved Adam and Eve. To put the word for tree as a sentence, it could read, to understand the trail to the destination. Many believe the tree of life represents Jesus, as does Noah's Ark, which is made from trees. The Ark saves all who are in it. In the book of Exodus, God spoke to Moses to put a tree, spelled the same as in Genesis, in the bitter water to sweeten it so that Israelites could drink it. This was during a time when Moses was leading the Israelites out of 400 years of slavery through the desert wilderness to the Promised Land, located in ancient Canaan on the eastern end of the Mediterranean Sea. Then he, Moses, cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, and he threw it into the waters, and the waters became sweet. And this is Exodus 15:25. There he made for them a statute and regulation, and there he tested them. Now some Bible translations translate it to wood, but the original Hebrew language is tree. So it's important to remember that the Israelites who spoke Hebrew probably realized what Moses was teaching them, that the tree represents the trail to the destination. God was trying to teach them that their way of life should be reflective of the tree of life. In reality, their destination through the desert was a short distance and should have only taken weeks. But because of their bitter attitude, they wandered for 40 years as God tried to teach them spiritual lessons on how to live and rely on Him. Instead of trusting God and being thankful, the Israelites were bitter and complained often <clears throat> about their circumstances. When they arrived at a place called Mara, which means bitter, they began to complain to Moses that the only water available was bitter. The Israelites had just escaped from Pharaoh and his army because God had parted the Red Sea so the Israelites could walk through it during their escape. Shortly after they walked through the parted sea, they witnessed Pharaoh's chariots and his army be swallowed up and drowned. God had just destroyed their enemies in a watery grave at the Red Sea, but instead of trusting him, they complained. This is probably the reason why God gave the parable of the tree, or trail to the destination, as one that sweetens the water. Pharaoh's armies were basically on a trail that caused the water to destroy them instead of save them. God said to them, If you will diligently listen to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes and give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you that I put on Egyptians, for I am the Lord your healer. Moses and the Israelites had this experience long before Jesus came to earth as a man. And many scholars believe this event was a reflection of Jesus himself. Remember, the word for tree means to understand the trail to the destination. And how did Jesus describe himself in the New Testament? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. In Isaiah 61, 1-4, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for their mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. In the Bible, in the book of Revelation, was written approximately 96 years after the death of Jesus. From a vision that was revealed to him, John of Patmos wrote the book of Revelation as a warning of various challenges and temptations that should confront the church. In Revelation 22, it appeared to describe Jesus. Quote, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, 
proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb, in the midst of the tree of it and of the river, on one side and on the other, was a tree of life, yielding twelve fruits, according to each month giving its fruit, and the leaves of the tree are for healing of the nations. Unquote. Now the peacemaker of the Huron nation, which started the Iroquois Confederacy around the year 1142, was known to hold a holy position to bring peace and life to the people on earth. Chief Leon Shenandoah, who was Onondaga and was head of the Iroquois Confederacy from 1968 to his death, said this about the peacemaker. Quote, he was Huron, and it is said his birth was attended by unusual circumstances, which suggested spiritual powers were present. It is said his message of peace and a good mind was sent from the one who created the human beings, our creator, unquote. Jake Swamp was a Mohawk leader and founder of the Tree of Peace Society. He served as Mohawk sub-chief and representative from the Mohawk Nation of the Iroquois Confederacy for more than 30 years. He explained that the peacemaker who encouraged years of ending fighting among the Northeast tribes chose the white pine tree as a symbol of peace. The peacemaker uprooted the tree and told the representatives of the first five nations to throw their weapons in the hole where the tree had been. These weapons represented their greed, hatred, and jealousy. The peacemaker planted the tree back on top and said, into the depths of the earth, down into the deep under earth currents of water flowing into unknown regions, we cast all weapons of strife. We bury them from sight forever and plant again the tree. Unquote. The four white roots known as the great white roots of peace went into the four directions, and the purpose of those roots was to spread the peace. The meaning of the planting of the tree symbolizes the great peace and strength to the Iroquois Confederacy. Now, when I personally had my dream of the flying horse, and I was standing on the roots of the tree, I didn't know anything about the Iroquois Confederacy and the Great White Roots of Peace. I was only 11 years old and hadn't been introduced to anything besides Christian teachings in church, and I just played outside as a kid. And in that dream, I don't know, there's another video of me describing the dream, but in the dream, the horse spoke to me and said, don't be afraid, it's me, Jesus. So that taught me that Jesus can come in many different forms and teach. So I've only felt led to learn about the peacemaker and the great roots of peace till recently, and now I'm realizing more and more what that dream meant that I had when I was 11 years old. And it's all coming together for me now and I'm realizing why I was standing on the roots of the tree in the dream. I think the peacemaker came to America to teach about this way of bringing tribes together to work as one strength. And I believe the Iroquois Confederacy will rise up again and be honored for what they brought to the world. And I believe the founders of the United States of America needed the instructions from the Iroquois Confederacy to create the U.S. Constitution. And our U.S. Constitution stands as an example of freedom and peace for all people of the world. <clears throat> yes, we are in a battle for our inherent freedoms and peace right now, but I believe the great white roots of peace will prevail. And I believe the native tribes still remember what true freedom feels like. And I believe it's a fulfillment of the fourth covenant of God made with King David in the Bible when he said he would extend God's kingdom of peace and blessings over all the nations. Jesus, who fulfilled the new covenant, is bringing peace to the world. <clears throat> and I think he came here as the peacemaker 
and established it hundreds of years ago. Besides, wouldn't you say it's rather ironic that America today is promising to protect Israel? I don't think any of this was a coincidence. God bless. Have a good day.